Good afternoon, everybody. Cool. I would like to introduce Connor, Brantley, and Alyssa, and the presentation Madison Conservation Corps Software Development for Home Energy Audits. Good afternoon. I'm Connor Cousins. I'm Brantley Gilbert. I'm Alyssa Felice. And we're here to introduce Madison Conservation Corps. To be the national model for the engaged university, engaged with ideas and the world. This is JMU's vision statement, and this is something that we believe that our project embodies. The problem is that the United States is very reliant on fossil fuels. However, there's only a finite amount of natural resources, so we will eventually run out. CO2 levels are rising, global climate change, we have rising sea levels, natural disasters, and ocean acidification. <coughs> Commercial and residential buildings are responsible for 42% of all U.S. energy consumption and 41% of CO2 emissions. The United States only represents 4.5% of the world's population, but we consume 20% of the global energy. The rest of the 6.7 million be billion people in the world consume the rest of the 80% of the global energy consumption. There are two paths to clean sustainable energy. The first being research and adoption of alternative energy, so we could use energy sources that have relatively fewer environmental consequences, such as wind, solar, geothermal, hydroelectric, and biofuels. There's also the conservation of energy, the act of reducing the amount of energy that is consumed, residential, automotive, and industrial. Our focus is on the conservation of energy. We plan to reduce energy consumption in the residential sector within Harrisonburg. Our group felt we could have a bigger impact on the JMU and Harrisonburg community through engaging residents to consume less energy. We believe this is the solution where we already have all the resources, we just have to make the choice to use less energy. The first step in reducing energy consumption in the residential sector is through an in-home energy audit. Okay, so now we're gonna do a sample scenario where we would actually conduct a home energy audit in the field, and I'll be playing the role of a homeowner. Um, I'll play the role of the lead auditor. And I'll be playing the role of the junior auditor. So we go up to the person's house, mm -hmm. um, knock on the door, and say, hello, we represent Madison Conservation Corps. We are an on-campus organization at JMU made up of students that want to make a difference in the Harrisonburg community. Currently, we are offering home energy audits to residents in Harrisonburg. Would you like to learn more about this opportunity? Wow, that sounds interesting, but I actually don't know what a home energy audit is. A home energy audit consists of thorough inspection of the energy flow in and out of your house. This includes the heating and cooling systems, insulation, appliances and electronics, and other types of factors. Wow, that does sound interesting. Um, it sounds time consuming and also expensive. How much is this gonna cost? Very good question. We are offering home energy for audits for free. Some companies charge up to $300. For free, what's the catch? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. However, we do have fluorescent light bulbs with us, so we can install these for a small price if you'd like. We'll explain these later in detail. Oh, great. I do still have a few questions before we get started. Of course. Well, how do I sign up? How long does a home energy audit last? Do I need to be home for the whole process? And can we do it today? In order to sign up, uh, currently we just need your contact information and we'll store it in our database securely. A home energy audit takes anywhere to, from two to three hours, and yes, we'll need you to be home for the process. To answer your final question, yes, we can, finally, we can definitely do today. Awesome, let's get started. Before we get started, we will need access to your attic, heating, cooling systems, and the various rooms that you'd like us to inspect. In order to get the most accurate and precise energy performance score, we recommend that we inspect every room. The audit will consist of two parts, a whole house part and a room by room part. We would like to start in your room or section that is easiest to access. Where would you recommend? Also, we highly encourage you to follow along in the process and ask as many questions as possible. Sounds good. Well, my kid's at school right now, so let's start in his room. Please excuse the mess. All right. Let's begin with the lights in the bedroom. Okay, so what's the benefit from checking the lights? They already work fine, and my kid already likes the lighting in his room. So the lights that are in this room are incandescent. They're cheap, they use a lot of energy, and they frequently need to be changed. Like we mentioned earlier, we have fluorescent lights in our car. This type of light is more expensive, but will save you energy and money in the long run because they last longer, they use less energy, and they will eventually pay off their initial investment. Oh, I never knew that. The other day I was at Walmart looking at a, a giant wall of light bulbs, and I ended up getting frustrated and just picking the uh, least expensive one. <laughs> that is a classic case that we see time and time again. Most people are overwhelmed by the various amount of light bulbs and the different prices. Would you like us to install these fluorescent lights in your room right now for a small price? Sure, let me grab my checkbook. 
<laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Let's install these before we move on. Next, we will enter, da enter data about your appliances. Before we start this section, are there any appliances that you know stay plugged in all day? Actually, now that you mention it, all of his appliances stay plugged in all day. Is that bad? This is another classic situation that homeowners are not aware of. In order, in order to answer your question, yes, it is bad to leave appliances plugged in all day when you're not using them. It's called leaking electricity. When your appliance is turned off and still consuming a small amount of energy that builds up over a year or longer. The average household in the U.S. spends nearly $40 every year on leaking electricity. That's absurd. Why would I want to spend $40 on something that's not being used? Exactly. So we recommend that after you use an appliance, you take the extra second to just unplug it once it served its purpose. It's a total win-win. You Wish save money <coughs> and energy. Wish I would have known that years ago. <laughs> so now we're going to audit the rest of the house. Um, we do the same process for every room and the whole house inspection. Um, so it would take about two hours. <laughs> um, and so at the end of the um, audit, um, I never knew I was wasting so much energy. I do have one more question though. You mentioned that implementing all of the upgrades would actually increase the market value of my house. How does this work? Well, if your house includes all the improvements that we recommended, adding insulation to your attic and purchasing a new energy efficient hot water system, your house value would increase. According to this study published by Appraisal Journal, if you decrease your energy costs by $300 a year, it could increase your house value by $6,000. That's crazy. I'm not looking to sell my house anytime soon, but you should reach out to my neighbor, John. He's soon to put his house in the market. Thank you for the reference. We will definitely reach out to John. So I want to thank you for letting us into your home and for giving us the time to walk you through an official home energy audit. Your score is available on our website. All you have to do is log in with the credentials that we provide. Um, once you log in, it will give you the option to create your own username and password. I learned so much today. It was very educational. Much more enjoyable than reading articles and teaching myself this on my own. I will definitely reach out to John and let him know how great of a job you guys did. Thank you for bearing with us for the role play. Um, <laughs> so like we mentioned in the role play, our home energy audit would consist of two parts. The first being the whole energy or the whole house uh, section, which we would inspect the heating and cooling systems, the air leaks, and as well as the insulation in the roof and in the walls of the house. Um, the next would be room by room which would uh, consist of inspecting the appliances and electronics, type of lighting, and windows in each room uh, separately. And now I'm going to discuss the equipment that we would use in the on-field um, home energy audit. So the first being technical equipment such as our iPad Air 2 and our structure that I.O. bundle, which is an attachment to the iPad that allows you to check the dimensions of a room. It also does thermal Im imaging and also x-ray. Um, and then the second uh, type of equipment that we would be using um, would be a blower door, thermal camera, fluorescent lights, LED light bulbs, and a multimeter, and this equipment would be provided from ISAP. So now I'm going to discuss the various stakeholders in our project. Uh, we came up with local contractors, JME administrators, homeowners, ISAP, JME students, uh, electric companies, and Harrisonburg Electric Commission, as well as Harrisonburg Realtors. The reason why we added uh, local contractors to our stakeholder diagram was because if we do recommend that somebody upgrades their insulation or replace a window, this would be providing uh, business to local contractors. We included homeowners because they're the ones that are actually getting audits done on their house. Um, ISAT is providing the equipment that we've used in our home energy audit and the JME students would be uh, conducting these home energy audits. And this is data that we actually took us a while to get this data from Harrisonburg Electric Commission. Um, they did not want to give it to us right away. Um, so this is the average kilowatt hour per customer from 2015 to 2016. And as you can see in January when people are starting to turn on their um, heating systems, the um, amount of energy being consumed uh, hits a peak. And then in the cooler months, in the fall and the spring, you can see that um, there's less energy being consumed because people do not need to have their AC on, any other appliances that may provide warm or cooling. Um, and so what does this actually mean? So we took the amount of data that the Harrisonburg Electric Commission gave us and we came up with there was 198 million kilowatt hours uh, consumed in Harrisonburg residential sector from 2015 to 2016. And so just to give you a little bit more uh, of an idea what this looks like, so this would be approximately 307 million pounds of carbon dioxide and the cost of this would run us about $16 million just for that one year from 2015 to 2016. Um, and so Virginia has a, a goal of reducing uh, energy consumption by 10%. So we did the numbers and we came up, if we 
reduce the energy consumption in the residential sector, we would save about $1.6 million just for that one year. And you're probably wondering why have we not done this yet? Um, seems like a simple task, but uh, these were our main focuses when uh, researching how to change uh, people's behavior in the household. And these are the main barriers that we ran into. So consumer inertia, limited access to capital for financial improvements, lack of public awareness, and unavailability of home performance services. Um, and we touched on majority of those in our role play. Uh, for in, for uh, this is actually the local uh, Home Depot light bulb wall. Um, and as you can see, it is pretty overwhelming. And you could, I mean, why is someone going to pay 29 bucks when the next light bulb is like $2? So most people do not understand why um, they're actually paying more for an energy efficient light bulb. And the next one. And now Brantley's going to talk about our progress in the future. of. All right, so in order to start this, our project, um, really most of our time was spent on background research. Um, so we wanted to research, um, we got the uh, data from Harrisonburg Electric Commission about um, how much energy is being consumed within Harrisonburg. Um, we wanted to research the energy process, um, the energy auditing process, so how do you actually perform this, an audit, how do you uh, um, go around and the procedures, what materials you use. Um, and we also wanted to acquire the equipment, so we needed to get our iPad that we could run our app on. We needed to get our the blower door and stuff. Um, so we wrote up a proposal, we sent it to ISAT, um, we got some, some money to, to buy our equipment, to buy our iPad, um, and then what we did is we actually went around to each other's houses and performed a home energy audit ourselves, manually. <coughs> um, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then we started developing our application. Um, it's not complete yet, but we've gotten a good groundwork. Um, we'll show you the ex uh, example of it, um, and then provide the framework. So we got the development framework, we got our different pieces together, all working together, um, and we have our, our two students here that will be taking the reins next year, um, and uh, so they'll, they'll be our team too, basically. Um, so they're going to finish our application using the framework that we built, and, um, so they'll also develop a website. So we haven't done the website yet, um, but we plan on having the website where homeowners can go in and look at their scores, and then look at the scores of other, uh, the averages around Harrisonburg and, um, you know, kind of like a competition sort of thing who can reduce their energy consumption the most. Um, and then we really want to start our organization. So we have our organization kind of in theory, but it's not officially recognized by JMU yet. Um, so we're hoping that by this point or next year that we'll actually be able to start our organization and get it recognized by James Madison University. Um, really, we want to get the word out as well next year. Um, so really start telling people that, hey, this service is available. Um, that these students are willing to do these home energy audits for free um, and really get the word out to the Harrisburg community. Uh, also, we, we have to start using our equipment. I mean, we have, um, we have some uh, blower door, thermal cameras. We have a bunch of equipment on loan from ISAT. Um, we need to go out, start using them, actually perform the home energy audits, um, and then uh, measure our results. So hopefully we can get some more data from Harrisburg Electric Commission if they well, give it to us because we had a hard time getting it in the first place. But um, also, we want to work on a feedback system. So, talking to homeowners and saying, "Hey, you know, ha did you implement any of the changes that we recommended? And has your electric bill gone down?" Um, really, just collecting that data and seeing how much of an impact you're making on the local community. So, what is Madison Conservation Corps? Um, it's our student-run organization that we plan to have um, volunteer students go out and do um, home energy audits in the local community. Um, and there's a bunch of incentives for both students and homeowners for this. Uh, for the students, it's great community service. Um, they can count it for um, any kind of organization or um, society they have. Um, they have practical skills for being future homeowners. So when you know college stu students go out and they get their own homes, um, they know like you know what kind of light bulbs should I install? Um, what should I be looking for in my installation? Um, also, it's a great resume builder. You can put on your resume, especially for ISAT energy students um, and ISAT. Anything to do with environmental or conservation, um, and then for homeowners, it's it's a win for everybody because for homeowners they they spend less money on electric bills, um, their home values go up as we talked about in our little skit. Um, so it's it affects the homeowners of uh, Harrisonburg, it affects the real estate values. Um, it's really a, a positive for most people involved. So how are we going to structure this organization? So we plan on having student auditing teams that are. Um, composed of two different protected students. So it'll be pairs going out. Um, it'll be a lead auditor. Lead auditor will be um, somebody with auditing <coughs> experience, somebody who's already done this a couple times. Um, really, they're kind of taking the charge during the hiding process. They'll be the ones knocking on the door, um, talking to the homeowner, and telling them about the process. 
Um, and usually they're going to be juniors or seniors, probably people who are you know moving on next year and um, really are teaching the junior auditors. So the junior <coughs> auditors would be the people who are kind of learning during the process or assisting, entering in the data. Um, they're really ones that don't already have energy auditing experience um, or just starting to join the organization. Um, and hopefully by the system of having new students constantly coming in and, and learning the process and then becoming lead auditors, we can keep the organization running even with you know people graduating and people coming in. Um, it's so we're always got people going out doing these auditing, the, the audits. So before we started doing any uh, development in our application, first of all, we wanted to do the audits. So we had to do it. We <coughs> went and did it manually. So we went around to our uh, houses. Uh, we went through the whole system where we checked the heating. Um, we checked the, the central um, the cooling systems. We checked the insulation, all the stuff. Um, and we took a bunch of data. Um, and we found a couple things in the process. Uh, first of all, it's really time intensive. It took us a long time to get around to each room and um, to enter all this stuff in the stuff uh, manually into our spreadsheet. Um, it took us a while to uh, calculate all the results. Um, and also, it's, it's hard to interpret. You know, we got a bunch of numbers here. We got some totals, and it's not really. There's no clear indication of, um, you know, what your score is or what you can do to improve your energy consumption. Um, so we kind of wanted to make a better system, um, and there's actually a. Uh, a program on the <coughs> West Coast called the Energy Performance Score, um, and it's kind of a, it's what home energy auditors on the West Coast give to um, homeowners after they've done a home energy audit. Um, and it kind of has some uh, nice visuals about you know, how much energy you've been using, um, what your score is compared to other people in the area. Um, but there's really, at least in this picture, there's no clear like recommendations of, hey, you know, you could save this much money if you replace these many light bulbs with LEDs or fluorescents. Um, so we really wanted to make it more of a uh, you know, step-by-step -step kind of procedure and really make it easy for both the students and for the homeowners to understand and to use. So we used a couple different things to build our application. Um, first of all, we used the Ionic framework. Basically what that is is a uh, JavaScript web development framework that allows us to build a code one time, so build it as, like, as if we're building a website, and then we can deploy it to an iOS device, we can deploy it to an Android device, um, basically, whatever platform we want to run it on. We have a tablet, an iOS uh, uh, iPad Air 2 that we're running it on, so uh, that's what we decide to use for our application for right now. Um, and then we're storing all this in uh, MySQL <coughs> database in our DigitalOcean uh, server. So basically, that means that um, it's, it's stored on a public address so that no matter where you are, you can access this data, um, enter into the data, do the audits. Um, this allows us to go around to the different areas of Harrisonburg and um, collect our data even you know, if we're not all in the same place. So multiple people can do it at the same time if we have more than one iPad. All right, so now we'll, we'll give a little bit uh, of a demonstration about the application that we developed. So this is our application running on an um, iPad. Um, and this, is, this was built with Ionic, as we, we just talked about. So it's, um, it can run on an iPad, it can run on anything else. Um, this is something called Auth0. So this is a um, user authentication system that we've decided to use. Um, by using this, it's a little bit more secure than storing stuff ourselves. So we're not actually storing passwords or anything in our own database. We're storing them, or we're sending them off to this authentication service. Um, also, you have options to log in with other stuff, so like um, you can use Google, you can use Facebook. We have Google enabled, but um, for some reason our testing server, it's, it's really slow going through, so um, cousin Connor is just going to put in his stuff right now. So the main parts that we did was um, adding a new residence and then starting our, audit, our actual audits, performing them. Um, so when we go around to a house, um, we need a couple things from them. First of all, we need uh, um, the residence name. Um, so just uh, John. Um, Smith. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then email.
minutes, whatever. Is Jay Smith actually going to get this email right now? <laughs> no, it's just uh, we haven't we haven't done anything with the email linking yet. It's just to uh, authenticate um, to I have the contact information. <laughs> Get oh yeah, so if you accidentally hit submit, um, um, well, when you when you submit it, it'll ask you if you want to do a, an audit. Um, so once you add your information, then you can go to start a new audit, um, and then you can you see the list of stuff here. Um, so we can search for our uh, address, and then uh, so just pick a random one. And so when we start audit, there's two sections. There's the full house section where we do the, um, like we're checking the heating, the cooling, stuff that affects the entire house. Um, and then we do the room by room section. Um, so for the full house section, um, you have building type. So you select whether it's a house or apartment. Um, they have number of occupants. Um, so, so there's three. Building year. So it, a lot of it depends on whether it was built after 1990 or before. Houses that were built before 1990 tend to have less insulation, um, less efficient appliances. That's really where the big shift is in energy conservation. Um, roof dive was just, um, it de depends on how much uh, sunlight is reflected, so it affects your heating costs a lot. Then orientation, how much sun's being projected on the house. Um, insulation. Right now, we just have bad, incomplete, or good. Um, we haven't we haven't really determined how to quantify that quite as much. So right now, it's kind of we just give a, an average value to each one. Same thing with wall insulation. Um, main heating, whether they have the air conditioning, heat pump, or a boiler. And then for hot water, whether they have electric heater, a boiler, or a solar heat water heater. All right, so once the whole house section is done, the icon turns blue to let you know that it's complete. Um, if you try to hit results now, it'll say room by room section incomplete. Um, same thing if you, you don't do the whole full house section. So you have to go into the room by room, um, and then for each room that you go into, you add a room. So we have, say, a, a bedroom. And then add look, your lights. So um, we decided to just do like group of lights, so maybe we have you know a couple of incandescents that are you know, three of them in the room, and then maybe we have like a LED in the room or something. Um, and then you can you can go in and edit them. Um, so it shows the lights that you have in the room, and then you go to your appliances. So say there's a television in the room. So then we enter in the energy usage data for that appliance. So say it's using two amps. Um, once it's auto-calculated, so a lot of devices either show the, um, the volts and the amps <coughs> or the wattage. Um, wattage is basically just volts times amps. So either one you can enter, um, plugged in. Um, so the leaking watt stuff that we were talking about really depends on if you leave your appliances plugged in. Um, and that's what this appliance type is doing. It's, kind of a, an average value of what these different appliances use if they're left plugged in. For like for televisions, um, typically they consume about, um, actually I don't know the number off the top of my head, but we have all the calculations in the app about how much they consume for appliance. And then once you add all those, so you have to have at least one appliance added already. Um, and then <coughs> you can add your windows. So you know, maybe there's two windows in the room. Uh, they have a width of just for some random data. Um, uh, whether they're double pane or single pane, and their orientation. So now you see we have two windows, 30 inches by 30 inches, double pane, north. Um, so once we have all this information, we hit done. Um, have all rooms being audited, confirm. And then you can see that both sections are blue, so that means that we have our audit. So we finished it up. Um, this is really the, the where we stopped. Um, we got to this part, and we we're working on our <coughs> aggregating our score and developing our framework. Um, but you can see that we have like a, a clear indication of what the score is, um, different values from you know the whole house section. 
Um, we currently are working on getting our uh, our like totals for everything, so we have it on the back end. Uh, the app, we're just trying to work with the recommendations and um, what kind of energy savings would be over time. So I think that's, um, yeah. Yeah, PC. All right, so we'd really like to thank uh, Dr. Benton for uh, all of his guidance and his mentorship during this project. Um, we'd also like to thank the ISAT department for sponsoring us and for uh, providing our, our, the equipment that we're using. Um, we, we pretty much started from knowing nothing about any of these systems to doing a whole bunch of research. Uh, most of our project was researching the energy audit and um, writing up our proposal and getting the, the organization started. So really want to uh, thank everybody for all their support. This might be beyond the scope of your project now, but have you ever thought about reaching out and working with local landlords who have properties in Harrisonburg for student housing for them to get a score and get audited along with the process of a landlord like renovating a house so it's fit to live for your students year after year, our landlord at least, every year will like, clean up the house and all that stuff. If you audit it and kind of post that, it would give students a way to kind of see where is a good place to live to keep utility costs low. It gets your name out there, it gets landlords' properties more noticed. Yeah, actually that's a that's a great idea. We're thinking about like what kind of organizations to like partner with. Um, so we talked about Harrisonburg Electric Commission, we've already talked to them. Um, there's a bunch of government incentives, so like uh, for landowners and for electric um, communities, or electric companies for um, saving energy. And so yeah, I mean, I think, uh, we, especially with starting an organization and getting it recognized by JMU, I think that's definitely part of that. Um, that's what these guys will be working on next year. So, yeah, thank you very much. What was uh, the most challenging part of developing an application and how did you guys collaborate building an application? Um, really, we started not really knowing any of this stuff. Um, so we uh, we didn't know any of the, like, uh, really app development or web development. Um, we had a little bit of experience in different areas, but um, it really was just a lot of trial and error, learning on our, uh, watching videos, um, learning, like helping each other out. Um, we used GitHub for collaboration, so that's where we pushed all of our code and worked from there. Um, and really it was just a bunch of late nights up together, huddled around computers and you know, helping each other out, so. Did you actually like go up to strangers' houses and say, hey, can we audit your house, or did you try friendly people this time around? This time around, we tried friendly people. We were, we were focusing on getting the framework and the reaction. research and everything. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, so we didn't actually ask strangers yet. So, <laughs> okay. so I asked this question in the last year, too. Um, if you guys had more time, what would be the next feature that you guys wanted to add to the application? I'd probably say just building out the results page a little bit more. Um, and. I know you guys probably saw the additional buttons that were on the main menu um, about like the profile and settings and stuff like that. Um, probably um, developing some kind of login system where you only log in. If you're a lead auditor, maybe you have more options than a junior auditor. Um, and then also the next step would be having a website. So like we said, we could have a neighborhood compete against another neighborhood to have a better energy score. And I think that that's where the big kick for people to actually change their behavior is if they look at John, their neighbor, who's saving $300 more than him a year. Um, I think that that's more of an incentive if they look at their peers. Um, so the next step would be having neighborhoods compete against each other. Cool. Uh, thank you very much.